Good evening. Good evening, yes. So, how is everyone? Everyone good? Had a nice day so far? Or depending on where you are, are having a nice day? Or will have a nice day, even better. Um, hello, Kango Fango. Hello, Mr. W. Hello, Marky. Yes. The second hour of this stream, the second and final hour of this stream, will be driving on your route. Yes. The first hour and the penultimate hour of this stream is going to be route building on the Milton Valley Railroad. Right, so, hello Marky, hi all, and WL, hello, almost there, we're right back, back, hey, 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 everyone, ha 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 ha, should I good evening, everyone. <gasps> <laughs> Uh, yes, I did have a nice day. Had a brilliant RP session today. Hmm. Some people have might might have had a brilliant PR session today. Public relations. So, uh, good, good, good. How are you today, Shardice? Well, since you ask, yes, I'm good. My chair is comfortable, and I am tired. So that's a great combination. Right. So, does anyone want to do voice chat or not tonight? Uh, King Fango, hells yes to that. Shadows is such a good storyteller. Oh, thank you very much. Nice of you to say. Brilliant public relations session. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, so does anyone want to do voice chat tonight or not? I would like to know now before I... Um, I will sure to help you read chat. I'll just grab my headphones. Okay. Okay, that means I need this screen. And I need to go into. Hey, I've already said that. Uh, into this one, actually. And this has remembered. Yes, it has. The sensitivity. I've got it set to 90 in case you're wondering. So 90. So negative 90. Okay. Oh, you're lime green there, but you're red there. Marky, interesting. Yes, yes, I know. I need to go out of Discord and join back in the thing in the call. There we go. That should be good. A or rather, yay! <laughs> I'm building a session for the Lou branch. Oh, that is very nice. I have seen, I have seen that branch. I've had a look at it, and it is very, very nice. I'm looking forward to driving on that. Hello, W L. Welcome. Hey. Is the volume okay, everybody on stream? Can you hear him all right? Can you hear me all right? Can you hear yourself all right? Can you hello, hear... Hello, hello, hello. Yes, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear the owls all right? Can anyone hear me? I can. Uh, yeah, can Kango says can hear both. Good, good, good. Oh, nice. Right, where were you for chat? Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'll am just. i just read this batch of chat. <laughs> this batch. Not sure what its yeah, batch number nice. is, but that's true. What hmm. unit will the player be driving, Marky? Yeah. For me, he's more like a pine green. I'm orange for myself. <laughs> well, so am I. Uh, <laughs> I do like the music, I must say. Yeah, it's it is music that plays in the trains mm, menu. Like the, like the gentle. Yes, it is nice. Yeah, like the gentle piano. Mm -hmm. Class one fifty. Ah, yes. All right. Ooh, sprinter. Yes, those are very loud. If you've ever ridden in or you've been in the vicinity yeah. of a running sprinter train, you will know that they are very, very, very loud. Even inside it, 
Like if you're riding inside it, inside this printer train, you literally have to shout to be able to hear the individual sitting next to you. Um, Blimey. However, it's still a train, so it's still fun to ride. <laughs> 150-1 or dash 2? 150-2, only ones GWR still have. Mm -hmm. Yes, drove on it myself when I when it was a standalone route. Can hear both. All right, I myself appear to be muted. Hmm. <laughs> All right, Marky. Don't GWR have one 150-0 unit? The one with a uh, couch? I saw it in Painton once or twice, RL. Both 150s as twos have gone to Northern. Oh, I see. Interesting. Sprinters and paces are both very loud, but lovely. Sorted out the complicated Coombe Junction section of the session. Ah, yes. Coach, not couch. <laughs> yes, right, coach. The one with the coach. Yeah. You're right. Um, <laughs> the one with the couch. I thought, wait, like, oh, it had a couch? It's like a VIP thing, but no. Like, imagine having a VIP <laughs> sprinter. Or, no, better, a VIP pacer. Imagine the Queen's pacer. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. If you didn't know, pacers are trains, DM so diesel multiple units that are built from bus parts. Uh, they were only meant to be a temporary mm -hmm. fix until they got proper new trains in, but they've lasted decades and they're only now being mm -hmm. phased out. Um, very loud, not very mm -hmm. comfortable, but still. Shere, it's funny you should mention that. Okay, so this is where, where we last left off. I done this wooded area here. Yes. Uh, so tonight I want to finish the fields leading up to the wooded area, and then, if possible, do a few mm -hmm. more fields on the other side of the wooded area. However, mm -hmm. well, actually, no. We can we can do both. Cool. I want, also want to drive. Are you tired? A little, yeah, but I think you are as well. Oh yes, of course I am. I am definitely. <laughs> Oh, and, I don't, and I don't, and I don't, and I don't have the right to be as tired as you are. Well, that depends. Uh, I think you have every right to be as tired uh, as I am. Can go, uh, uh, can go. Uh, someone made a royal jubilee black with orange stripes reprint for TS class one one four three pacer. I've installed in everything. Yes, I remember it. But I didn't remember it when I said it. When I said the thing about the. Uh, VIP pacer. Uh, can go in quotation marks. Uh, what is this? What is this? Ah, uh, I'd say it's an unfinished field. What would you say? Yeah. Personally, I think it's an aeroplane. Oh, I mean. Oh, I missed one. Uh, can go, yeah, XD uh, Diamond Jubilee Train Class 64 broke down and, and thus the pacer was sent as a, a replacement. <laughs> uh, Marky, Marky says, I bet the Queen was delighted. Uh, can go, you missed one above. What is this? I know. Uh, can go, um, if she's a rail enthusiast. Well, Queen Victoria definitely was a rail enthusiast. Very much so. Very, very much mm. so. She had her own uh, train, her own royal train for uh, trips. And what they used to do oh, is yeah. they used to have a locomotive run ahead of the train so that if there was any sabotage okay. along the way, that that so it's something like the rails uh, been uh, like the, the sleepers been torn up so the so that the locomotive would derail. Well, they'd send a lo locomotive ahead of the train so that mm -hmm. that would derail and say, a bit like a food taster, only for railways, and they don't taste them, they just ride along in front of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Queen Victoria... She... Uh, just letting you know, Nat. No, yes, go ahead. Just letting you know, now we've got someone else who's dropped out of the board game club. Um, oh. So I just hope that... Uh, that the other that the other person uh, shows up to my. Mhm. Mm Me too. But the most important thing with these kind of things is to not get discouraged. Yes, you will likely not succeed Aww. in the beginning, 
But if you keep at it, then it is quite re rewarding to start a group. Mm -hmm. And I speak from experience. Yeah. Oh, there's a link. Um, <clears throat> yes, there's a link to Wikipedia. Um, and as for Kango, no, it's uh, yes, that's the one who's decided to leave. Who's decided to leave? Is there a size limit on how large a route can be? Yes. In trains? The limit is the file size. So I believe that a... Okay. Because when you... A CDP file, which is a uh, mm -hmm. exported trains content, can ha there is a maximum size that... And there can be huge routes. I mean, you've seen uh, Marquis... Mm -hmm. Uh, Cornish Railways and Central Europe. You see how huge those are, and they're still getting bigger. And then if you mm -hmm. upload something as payware, then the file limit size of that gets increased another uh, jump, basically. So there is a limit, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it would take years to reach that limit. <laughs> um... Kango says King's Cross Edinburgh or Edinburgh Dundee. Yeah, those are also very, very large. And they have taken years to develop. Yeah. So here's a question Do you know what the difference is between the Flying Scotsman locomotive and the Flying Scotsman train? Do you know what the difference is? Train and locomotive last stream. Hang on, can you not hear me? No, I can. I can oh, hear you. God. Oh, there, there we go. Yeah, well, I was, I, I was just, I was, I was talking. Um. So, well, we went through the difference between a train and a locomotive mm -hmm. last stream. Um. I mean. Uh, I mean more. Okay, so the thing is, the locomotive is actually newer mm -hmm. than the train because, like, the Flying Scotsman, I mean. Uh, one second, let me. There are mm -hmm. field trees, that's what I need. It's, it's, because the, the actual Flying the train is The train is behind. Yes. The train, well. The train goes from, behind the locomotive, isn't it? Yeah, from what last stream's research was, or the stream before that, I'm not sure which one it was. The hmm. a train is e is a uh, collection of coupled up rail vehicles with or without a locomotive. Apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the train was first because the train is the actual service that goes from King's Cross to Edinburgh. It. Uh, Started in the 18-something, I'm not sure exactly what date, I think maybe 1870s or 1860s or something like that. And then that was mm -hmm. such a famous train, I mean, the Sterling single wheelers pulled those trains, for example. It was such a famous train that they decided to name mm -hmm. one of Sir Nigel Gresley's A3 uh, Pacific locomotives after the train, which is the Flying Scotsman. But now everybody oh, yes. only... But now most people, when they hear the Flying Scotsman, think of the locomotive rather than the train, which is a bit ironic, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a bit like the Orient Express. Uh, Kango... Mm -hmm. uh, Kango one-to-one -one creations on the ECMI came with trains since many years. Uh, Kango, it was last uh, TS stream, and this is for me. Ah, TS, yes. Um, I think there's a Discord delay, so it might sound like I'm a... I think, for me, I think there's a... It, this is, I've put this in the chat. I think there's a Discord delay, so it might 
sound like I'm interrupting you, but on my end I begin talking before you start speaking. Oh, right. So I'm going to so, say... Yeah, just let you know I, Yeah, I'm going to say... I'm going to say the number four. When I say four, say now. So, three, two, one, four. Now. Yeah, it's about a three second delay. Uh, uh, can go uh, since 1862, and then there's a Wikipedia link, I and mean, that's Loco, another Wikipedia link. Um, can go, can go ECM, what's that? ECML, East oh, Coast yeah. Main Line. Um, yeah, e e ECM, capital L, not ECM, um, lowercase l or i, uh, meaning East Coast Main Line. It's always annoyed me how, um, if you, I think if you type it out on a keyboard, um, the I, uh, the, no, the, hang on, let's see if I can remember, hang on, at least on a Word document, uh, the, uh, the uppercase I and the lowercase L look exactly the same. Well, that is depending on the font that you use. In most fonts, that is true. Um, it, but there are the fonts where it's different. Yes. Hmm? In the usual font. Um, like I'm trying to think of more. Do you mean Arial? Word with... Do you mean Arial? Oh, I'm talking about um, Calva Headings. Which is the one hmm. that I get given. You can change the font uh, if you I'm want. Trying to think. Um, How about Illumination? Yeah, I know, I know. I don't... Is that a font? No, no, I, I meant I the word. I, I, I meant the slightly... word, because that has a capital I with lowercase L's in it. So it they all look the same. Illumination. Yeah, well, same with illness. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. I'm trying to... Uh... Yeah, because you could, because if you typed it out at least, you could, you know, aside, if you got rid of the red lines or the bottom of the correction lines, you could literally put a um, lowercase l instead of an instead of an instead of an uppercase i, and I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference from looking at it or not very yes. well at least. Absolutely. Um, it depends on the font. See, see, yeah, can go. Um, I'm gonna see. I, I, I tell me if I get this the wrong way around. Can go. Um, I and l, yeah. With set of serif fonts like Curvia, they're different. Like the word ill. Yeah, yeah. Just looks like three lowercase L's. Because I, I actually don't think I know anyone who doesn't write their cap, who doesn't write their lowercase I's with a dot on the top, or I've never seen that uh, written down. Well, in fonts, well, in which font does the lowercase i not have a dot? Which font are you using mostly? Did you say something with capitals? Uh, cal. I'll, hang on, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get it. I think it's caliber body or something. Caliber body for the main bulk of it, and the caliber headings for the headings. Hmm, I'm not sure what that font is exactly. But there are fonts. It's the one, I mean, I have Microsoft Word. I mean, this is, I mean, it, I mean, the the one I've got is Microsoft Word 2007. So, well, the caliber body. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, is the you. The thing is that the default font might change for what version of uh, Microsoft Word <coughs> you have. However, you yeah. can always change mm. what font you're using. If you don't like a specific one, you can always choose a different one. And you can download thousands of fonts online if you don't, if you have mm. none of them that uh, you find particularly good. However, when you do do that, no, you should be a bit wary of uh, licensing because some fonts may only be uh, licensable. The license may only allow some uses for some fonts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not—it's not a big deal. I'm fairly like, 
in most cases people will know people will know oh um, that's three uh, vertical lines then ness it's likely he meant illness mm-hmm. uh kango says you git kango what? Uh, says by the he way he doesn't say that by the way by the by the way he said he says by the way i said right L slash I and L slash I, not L slash I and L slash I. <laughs> See what I mean? Exactly. It's like when it's like, it's like when you write down, it's pronounced, it's pronounced, it's pronounced G I F. Hmm. Although the um, the actual in um, inventor of the uh, GIF. Um, Said that said yeah. that it, it's pronounced GIF, not GIF. Yeah, but I think in this case, death of the author has taken place. And for any, do you know what that is? Death of the author. It's presumably not as simple as when the author dies. <laughs> no, most of the time, no. Death of the author is mm. when. A creator of something. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. so someone creates something, and then the public mm-hmm. uh, builds such a strong head canon or opinion of that thing that mm. <laughs> the intent of the author, no matter what that was, if it's the same or it's, if it's different than mm-hmm. what the public. Thinks the intent is it, that the author's intent doesn't no longer matters. For example, um, mm-hmm. if you've written a story, uh, like a murder mystery, and mm. in the end you intended it so that it was the butler who did it, oh. then if you had written <laughs> the story in such a way that the audience would think that actually it was the maid, and then certain say it becomes a best-selling book. Mm-hmm. And millions of people have read it, written about it in forums, it's been discussed on TV, there's maybe been a movie adaptation as well, and eventually you come forward and say, actually, no, it was the butler who did it, that is how I meant it, then death of the author will likely have taken place, which means the public, your audience, will then likely not accept that. They will likely say, well, it doesn't really matter if you say that, because this is now our story, and this is what we think the story is like, and then that's what f- <laughs> the story is essentially like. So you essentially lose control over your own work because of how uh, well, famous it is. Well, I mean, I, I mean, unless you don't tell the people uh, who did who who done it at the end, then I don't think that. I mean, I think that. I don't think that's an, like that could be an applicable thing because that ha- because that has a concrete answer. It's not like a pronunciation of something, for example. It doesn't have or, or doesn't explain to you the concrete answer. Hmm. Yeah, I see your point. I see your point. I but I get the concept. I get the concept of what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, K- uh, Kango, you had read my previous messages as I and L, yeah, but I had said L and I. Well, how the heck was I supposed to know that? Uh, exactly. Kango, um, oh well, it's all right. Exactly. Yeah. I think he's just joking. Oh. <laughs> like that's just that's just it's just mean. Uh... Oh, good grief. <laughs> Mm. Oh damn. Mm. I can go, yeah, you're right, Mr. W. Cheers. Um as for the board as for the board game club, um if the other guy doesn't show up, then we could just do one up on snake oil again. If apps if necessary. Um, but I do have an. But I think I do have another game set and ready. Um, Ooh, nice. 
but but you'd need to do a uh, you need to make an account on board on board game arena yeah well that doesn't uh, usually take that long so we could I think... do that on the fly yeah. i mean if the fly consents yes of course because i don't because what i don't want to do i don't want to do sort of normal board games where you roll and move i want ones like spyfall for example where you have to talk no true look at this well, it's more I've... it's more sort of or it's more complex mm. if you look here in the map you can see Kanga, it says... and like articulate yes like articulate that could be fun that could be fun um look at this it says merchant yeah, i've got that one in the bag mm. it says merchant what hmm if you look in the stream it says merchant why merchant it's free i've it's named the object three merchant three bales of hay Ah, no, it's not three bales oh. of hay. If you just look in here, you can see it's it two bales of hay. But if I look over to the left, you can see there's a tent where there's somebody sleeping in there. Yes, actually, it's just boots. But no, it's actually some. some it's, it's supposed to be somebody sleeping oh. in there. So just some merchant who's been oh. wandering the roads uh. has set up tent in here, <laughs> sleeping. Oh. I don't think it's that noticeable it's from the train. It's a wonderful little detail. Oh, thank you. I think so as well. Oh. I think I need some silos. Yeah, I still... I still haven't looked up how to play Articulate, Kango. Sorry about that. It's really very, very easy. Um... We can... I mean, I remember how to play it. Kango, I think, remembers how to play it. So if you did want to play it, then we could do it in a, in a matter of minutes of explanation. It is so, so simple to do. And when... And when... And when we do, I'll put the link. I'll put the link into important links in the thing. Or was it? Yeah, I think I it was. I think it was important. Called. I think it was important links. Something like that. Gate. Some something and game links. I think. Hmm. But yeah, isn't it where you have to, um, you have to. Basically, get people to guess a word without saying the word itself. Yeah, that is basically it. I mean, we can we can play a little game of it now. How would they? So. Oh no, it's fine. Uh, I'll just quickly check. Where is it? I could. If indeed that is that, I will. If there we did is. play it, I would look up the rules just in case I'm missing something obvious. Yeah. But I don't think that I, I am. I take Famous last words. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, if if it, I mean if it's if it's literally as if it's literally as simple as that. Then, then surely you wouldn't need an online emulator for it. True. You could just like aside from giving you words. Yeah, that's true. Mm. I think there are there there was a way of playing with cards. I think we, we I mean back when I played it in uh, the youth service. I there were we played in multiple different ways. I, there was a, a wheel to spin as well, where it then landed on a specific topic, I think. <clears throat> and then you had to make up a word of that topic. But we never really oh, used we, yes. But we never really used that. I think we I think we maybe used it once or twice, but we mostly made up uh, our own stuff. And I think that was a bit more fun. Oh, there we go. Game, there we go. Game rules, it says here. Hmm. Uh, oh, they've actually got... Oh, okay. The site at, okay, the site where the online emulator was. That's actually a, like it's not just an articulate one. It's got multiple board games. Yeah, I'm putting that on on favorites. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Uh... Well, you're lucky that Richard Trevithick didn't say that. Do you want to know who Richard Trevithick is? Was? That a joke? Is that a joke? That... I think I've heard the name somewhere. <laughs> You've probably heard it from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to know who he was? Uh, I will just read the chat. Uh, well then. Uh, Kango, eh? What? Oh, why, oh, why, hello there, potential customer. 
uh, Kango, uh, Shadow Dice, would we play it with a spinny thing? You tell me, Kango, you sent me the online emulator. Uh, if not, it's fairly simple. Uh, Kango, it was hashtag important links on uh, THM. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Kango, there was there were several there were several subjects: people, world, action, object, nature, and random. Uh, Kango XD, uh, Mr. W, think of plateways. Whatever that means. Uh, oh, yes, hang on. plateways because of Richard Trevithick. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. They said they can't hear me. Oh. No, no. He says few. Works now. Oh. That's strange, because I could hear you. I, I could always hear you. Muted. Oh, he muted Whoa. it. I think he typed <laughs> something, and if you press M... God's sake, dude. The thing is, when you press M, you mute the stream if you're not in the chat box. Sometimes it throws the mouse pointer out of the window, and then it doesn't put it back into the text box. So then you can accidentally mute it if you press M. But yes, the plateway, think plateways, the plateway was a ref, a hint oh. to who uh, Richard Trevithick was. Yeah. Uh, well, well, so, well, well, surely then you wouldn't be able to hear shout outs either. Uh, yeah, he wasn't. I hear, wouldn't say anything. can't hear if you works now, muted it accidentally. So weird. Thought it was just, uh, yeah, Mr. W, I don't think we'd use the spinny thing. The online emulator doesn't have it anyway. I'm just looking it up right now. Okay, so go on. Who was um, Mr. Trev Mr. Trevific? He was the inventor of the first steam locomotive. Oh yes. Yeah, he invented. He he invented loads of different tries. Originally, I mean, well, the first steam locomotive that worked, and that is a very important distinction, mm -hmm. because early. Uh, earlier, and I think this is pre-Victorian <laughs> times, and this I think this is Georgian times. Uh, I think so. I think that's it. I'm not quite sure if it is Georgian, mm -hmm. but I think it was. Uh, the 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 main mode of transport transport over land was through horse. So mm -hmm. the thing is, when they were thinking of okay, how can we harness the power of steam? Yes, they had a boiler on wheels. But they didn't really think of to make the wheels drive it along. So they had these uh, legs mm -hmm. at the back of it that were supposed to be steam powered to push it along, like kind of horse legs like, just sticking out the back of the locomotive. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And there were loads of designs, they didn't work. Either they just didn't run. I think some of them may have also exploded. Uh, but Richard Trevith Trevithick's design, it worked. <laughs> it worked. And, wow. Uh, yeah. No. There were loads of other ones with gears as well, with, with these big geared wheels and vertical pistons, all sorts of interesting things. Uh, if, you, if you want to have a look, then I would suggest that you do have a look. Because some of those designs are really interesting. At least if you're interested in locomotives mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Um, sorry for the stress. Yeah, I don't think we'd use a spin. All right. And was from Ca Camborne in Cornwall. Yes, that's true. That is true. I think, uh, wasn't he, uh, oh. I think he may have been a miner as well. Or am I confusing that with George Stevenson? I might be confusing that with, I might be confusing that with George Stevenson. <laughs> but the thing is, the first, okay, so the first steam engine, and I'm specifically saying engine and not locomotive, was designed by the ancient Greeks. It was literally just a hollow metal ball with two angled pipes sticking out of it that was suspended on a pivot in mm. the middle. So they put water in and they boiled it, they put a flame underneath, and then the water turned to steam, mm. pushing out of the little pipes, basically turning them into jets, spinning the ball. It was, a, it was an amusement, mm. an entertainment item. 
they never really thought about using the power of steam mm. for anything uh commercial for any for any thing industrial and then later on in like the i think 18th or 17th century so like uh six i think the 1600 1600s or 1700s sort of around that area it may have actually been earlier mm. but no i think around that area uh the first industrial steam engines were built can you guess what they were for mm -hmm. but i presume not for transporting the public no oh actually wasn't it uh, i might get this wrong wasn't it a wartime thing we used to transporting supplies I think. No, I'm speaking about. I'm talking about first steam engines, not locomotives. What's the difference? A steam engine is just a boiler, that it's just a device that uses steam to power something. So a steam engine, like for example, you might have mm. a diesel engine which powers a generator. It's, it's, it's not moving itself. A, the same way, a steam engine mm -hmm. can be used to power other stuff. Whereas a steam locomotive specifically has its steam engine that it carries with it. So it moves itself. That is the difference. Do you want to know the answer? Yeah, sure. The first steam uh, engines were built to pump water out of mines in Cornwall because a lot of the mines oh, in Cornwall yeah. because a lot of the mines in Cornwall were actually by the coast and they went they went for miles underneath the ocean they were deep went for miles underneath the ocean and there was so much water that uh, dripped through the rock into the mines that originally they had bucket systems where they bucketed out the water while mm. people were working to keep the mines from flooding. However, with the advent of oh, yeah. steam engines, there are these huge stationary steam engines the size of buildings that they used uh, to pump water mm. out of the mines. They also used them to get mine to power lifts to get miners into and out of mines. The first steam locomotives, like you said, were actually used within mines mm -hmm. to shunt wagons. They were very unreliable. They often broke down and they were very, very, very slow. Like I'm talking like maybe two to five miles an hour. Yeah. Some Oof. of them even slower. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they broke down mm -hmm. so many times. However, the thing is, that they didn't really put together that you could use these steam engines to go long distances. They only really used them within mine uh, for shunting and also for getting these trucks down to canals where they would be, the coal or whatever they were mining would be put onto barges, which is how it had been done since mm -hmm. the medieval time, really. And, mm -hmm. well, yeah, until sometime uh, they decided, okay, well, let's make a public railway. And then there were the first, well, there, okay, there are two different, okay, so the first actual railway, the first public railway was the Stockton and Darlington Railway, which ran, surprisingly, between mm -hmm. Stockton and Darlington. <laughs> uh but it was a... I think nah, it was... No. Nah. No. Can't be. You must be... Surely you must be wrong about that. I um, never guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was, I think, for minerals, mostly for... Yeah, for stuff like that, I think. The first public railways, the first railway that had <clears> passenger... <throat> uh, that was meant for passengers to connect cities, passengers as well as freight... I mean, yeah, sure, the Stockton and Darling, mm -hmm. of course, people rode it as well, but it wasn't officially for people. Mm -hmm. So the first mm. passenger railway, or in many, the first, like, proper railway, 
that had um, mm -hmm. big sheds and had uh, locomotive and had big stations for people and all that sort of stuff was the Liverpool Manchester Railway. It mm -hmm. went. Can you guess? Liverpool Manchester. <gasps> How did you guess? Yes. Um, yeah, from Liverpool to Manchester. Because the thing is, with uh, with trade coming in from America, a lot of those ships came in at mm -hmm. Liverpool. And there was a huge market, I think specifically for textiles, for wool and textiles. I think it may have also been ships from Australia, but I think mostly mm -hmm. ships from America came in at Liverpool. And... The thing is, they only had a canal system to take things inland to Manchester, where a lot of mills were, a lot of factories. So the canals were mm -hmm. really slow and could not keep up with the uh, demand from that came in for, for the, from the ships. So they said, OK, let's build a railway between Liverpool and Manchester for the goods. And then also as a bonus for passengers. Now, mm -hmm. this there is so much interesting stuff related to that. However, I think it's probably better to read chat first, and then maybe if you're still interested, I can go into a bit of that if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's reading chat? You or me? Mm, I'll read chat. I will read chat. Okay. <laughs> oh, Shadis, could you show us a pic of those with the legs? Um, I'm not sure that I can find one. Basically, just imagine a locomotive like Catch Me Who Can, only with these mechanical legs sticking out the back. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, the replica? That still stomps on British roads? <laughs> Shadis, Mills? Oh. Engine houses, which can still be seen around Cornwall today. Yes, engine houses for those uh, first steam engines. I've seen pictures of them, videos of people exploring them, and it is really, really interesting. You can almost feel the history with each breath you take. Nice. Huge steam engines, the size of buildings. So, like in St. Mays Railroads? <laughs> well... No, well, <laughs> uh, Liverpool Manchester Railway too, and what about the Oxford and Hampton Railway? Ah, that was another early one. Sure is. Aha! I knew it. Market for wool textures. Wool textures, no textiles. Right. So, do you want to know a bit more about the Liverpool Manchester Railway? If it gets too much, just say so. Just say, well, can we uh, change the topic? Maybe. Uh. Well, I mean, I mean, you know that I don't, you know, I don't really have as much of an interest in it as you. Um. Ah, well, chat wants to hear it. Yeah, fair. Yeah, go on then. Okay, I'll 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 try to keep it relatively short. Um. Okay. So the first thing is. Chat wants what chat wants. Mm-hmm. So, the first thing is <laughs> that when the Liverpool-Manchester Railway was being built, they had only completed a stretch of a few miles. However, they did not have a locomotive. No locomotive had been invented that could meet the requirements of the railway. So, they wanted a locomotive that was fast, and by fast, I, my, I mean like about 30 miles an hour. And that could run reliably. And that was also fuel uh, economic. And that could also uh, pull strong loads. So they decided to run, to have mm -hmm. a competition. Trials. We call the Rainhill Trials. Because of the, named after the town that was there, because that was where the bit of track they had was there, and they, they were only like a couple of months preparation time, I think, and there were quite a few designs um, cool. submitted. Uh, one of them was disqualified immediately because it was uh, not a steam locomotive, but rather a horse on 
uh, basically tread uh, uh, tread wheels, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which the, the horse actually broke through the wow. tread wheels. Uh, yeah. Another another steam locomotive. I'm not sure if it. Ex- oh. I think it exploded. I think another steam locomotive exploded. Two oh, other good. ones. Two other ones, which were promising for the start. One of them uh, ran out of steam pretty quickly, even though it had a promising start and was very fast. It ran out of steam very quickly. Mm -hmm. It did not get up the grade, and a part of it broke. Another locomotive, which was really well built, a part of it broke, which made it disqualified. It couldn't run. They couldn't repair it. Otherwise, that steam locomotive Mm -hmm. was actually quite good. However, there was one locomotive there, one revolutionary locomotive, <laughs> which had so many technical, um, what's the word? Uh, Advancements? What's... Advancements, yes. Uh, revolutionary new tactical, Adva- not technical, technical advancements, yes. Uh, for example, it had a flumed boiler, which is a quite a f- fancy word for saying that the boiler had tubes in it which meant you increased the heating area, so it could have much higher pressure. Okay. It had horizontal pistons, like actually almost all modern steam locomotives do. And that was Stevenson's uh-huh. rocket. You know rocket, the yellow locomotive with the long funnel. Okay, have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Anyway. That I've locomotive... not seen it, but I've heard of it. Do you want and to see Kango suggested it before you said it. Yes. Uh, if you put one in the thing, yeah, sure. I can show you one on stream. <laughs> this is a uh, okay. Rem- this is a well. Just don't let it get in the way you. Just don't let it get in the way you work. No, no, it's fine. This is a reconstruction of it. Stevenson's rocket. Okay. Uh, there you go. For, I just went for it to catch up now. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It looks quite steampunky. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where we get steampunk from, from the Victorian era. So. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. So that locomotive, that won the trials by default, yes. But even if it hadn't won by default, it was the best what? locomotive. Because the thing is, every single locomotive mm. design after it was based on this locomotive. So, yeah. That is, mm-hmm. yeah, actually for the 150th anniversary of the Rainhill Trials, I think in the 70s, they actually had a huge steam gala where they had mm-hmm. steam locomotives from all over the country, from museums and heritage railways, come to a town, not actually Rainhill, but n- kind of s- close, uh, well, under their mm-hmm. own power. Yeah, locomotives from all over... The country, all over the UK, mm-hmm. came under their own power, and it had so many stars there, like Flying Scotsman, Mallard. Uh, <clears throat> it had some of the Duchesses there as well. It had the replica of Flying Scotsman, uh, not, not Flying Scotsman, Rocket, as well as some other locom- old locomotives as well. So many, hund- I think hundreds of locomotives there. Uh, it was very, very nice. I saw mm-hmm. a recording of it. Right, with that, uh, we've got six minutes left. Mm-hmm. So... Um, what would you like to talk about? Uh, well, uh, I think it's... Well, first of all, I shall read the chat. Uh, where were we? Where were we? Where did you get up to? Um, market mm. for wool textures. Uh, can go, yeah, sure, go ahead or not. Uh, we've only got 11 minutes left. I don't want to bore anyone. Uh... Then I say, uh, you're not, don't worry. Kango, oh, Kango, oh, will right. Uh, really reliable and right on time. Stevenson's rocket? Yep, call it. Uh, mm-hmm. replica. Uh, shout out, right. And what about the other countries aside from England? Were they also based on British designs? <laughs> well, the thing is that uh, I think most, if not all, countries with first steam locomotives were actually built in the UK. For example, Germany's first ever steam oh, locomotive, okay. the uh, Adler, which is German for eagle, was actually an English-designed oh, yes. and built locomotive. It was built by the Stevenson Company. 
along with the track system mm. and the and the signaling system. Oh, and of course, also the engineer. Yeah, the engineer also came from the UK that drove the locomotive. I think it was Irish. Mm. Yeah. Of course, they don't really tell you that in Germany, oh. that their first pride and joy, the first locomotive that Germany has ever <laughs> had is actually an uh, uh, English locomotive. But, yeah, America as well. <laughs> America as well. The first American locomotives, those beautiful old American locomotives, those were also built and designed in the UK, built in the UK, and then exported to America. Basically, Huzzah most... England. Yeah, I mean, that was back in the day when England was still... Uh, in really industrial and exported things around the world, which mm -hmm. is not really that big, big of a thing anymore. Although back then child labor was mm. a very very common thing, so uh, yeah, it's not all got a way out. Yeah, it's not all roses. <laughs> uh, far from it, actually. No, it was quite a, a yes. poor life back then <laughs> for most people. Mm, not nice at all. Like for example. The, do you want to? Do you want one example? Yeah, go on. So in, in, in at least, we know this for a fact. For some mines in the UK, well, for for most mines in the Victorian time, there were there was child labour, because children were small enough so that they could fit mm. through some of the tighter tunnels underground, uh, where adult men mm. couldn't really go, making it easier for them to work there. Additionally, there were some mm -hmm. pumps that were powered by treadmills and they had children who were job they were paid they were paid to walk on the treadmill in the treadmills in near pitch black only with candlelight underground to power pumps to pump water out of mines. Uh, Mm -hmm. And of course, all of the health issues that come with working in a mine, like for example, dust, like that is a huge thing that is very mm -hmm. dangerous, dust in the lungs and things like that, as well as mm -hmm. other things that, of course, health issues that you might think are related to being in a mine, of course, all apply to the children as well. However, mm -hmm. the doctors of the time actually said that mm -hmm. slate dust is healthy. No, it's even worse than coal dust. Oh, I think I remember this. Mm -hmm. Right. Like so yeah, not all rosy. Uh, yes. No. However, then most of history isn't. No. Uh. uh um. Can go Adler O two two Adler. Uh, wasn't the British version called Part? Parting, parting them. Uh, not sure. Not sure about that. Okay. Uh, I can go uh, some, something like that. Uh, both were included in Sid Meier's uh, Railroad. Can go to shout out. Yeah, it's not all hunky dory and, and Yorkshire roses or Lancashire roses. Okay, uh, slate dust. Whoa, hang on. <clears throat> slate dust. Why? It, it's the best. It's the best thing you can get for your children. They will enjoy the beautiful dust of your aroma. No, that's that just sounds odd. And no, they will love good. working in the mines. Mm. I, I found that whenever I, whenever I try and do a posh accent now, recently, it, it, it goes into American. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. The thing is, mm. the, did you get the joke about the Yorkshire and Lancashire Give me a roses? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, War of the Roses. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll, I just need to put my thing on charge. Actually, no, I should, I, actually, no, I should be able to yeah. do that without taking... Me it's 10 o'clock now anyways, and I want to ride on the session in the road. Uh, yes. On marquees. Indeed. Oof. I still can't believe you're, you're only working on the Milton, on, the Milton, um, uh, on stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can see how long it's I mean, taking. Something that you're... Yeah, I mean, something that you're going to make money... Well, I presume you're going to make... Sort of make money for. Only working for it... What? Four hours a week? No. No! Three hours a week. This week, yes. 
Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I really don't know how much money can be made from this, as like I've talked about before. Um, but yeah, most of this is mm. the, I mean, most of this is the joy of making the route. I mean, if I did this professionally, then I could not afford to do this on stream because it would just take way too long to get it finished. Um, but yeah, the thing is, mm. this also builds a an audience for it. If I've got this many videos out on yeah, YouTube for it, true. if I'm posting it on Discord, on the Trains Discord, uh, and if I'm the other videos that I'm doing other streams, that is also the people who watch that might also be interested in Trains, and then well. It, all people who watch trains Ooh. might also find my videos about my games and then it's just kind of, it's building an audience oh. which is an it's important a domino part. Effect. and if i'm the thing is i was playing trains <clears throat> before i even thought about before i even knew that you could sell the routes so it's like i'm <laughs> doing what i was already doing only now i have the potential to make a little bit of a return on it um so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this area does need more work. At the moment it looks kind of like a bit too <laughs> much like an oasis for me. For my taste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Kango, what are the voters, yeah. Uh Kango, it feels like half an hour has passed, but two have. Mm hmm Oh yeah, of course. Um Wait, what wait, really? I thought you said you were gonna ride Marky's session for I will last hour yes i will that's why i'm ending this stream now i just want to get a thumbnail yeah but but that means that two hours haven't passed uh wait did he say two hours have passed did he say an hour yeah, has passed he says oh can go two halves i meant oh right two halves uh, uh two halves is now yeah uh, <clears throat> marky i think i've just I think I've just finished my low session. Not tested it all yet, though. Uh, Kengo, oh, right, nice. Am I also a part of the established origin? Of course you are. We all are. Um, Marky, I found you by searching trains on YouTube. <laughs> That's always good when you're one of the first things that comes up for a search. <laughs> um, Kengo, ah? Uh, Kengo to shout ice. Just needs two date, date palms, and that's it. Mr. W, uh, two halves, I meant. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, only one hour has passed. Can I go? True. Yeah. yeah, I was a bit confused by that. Yeah, as well. I think I want to use this as a uh, thumbnail. Actually, mm. maybe it'll zoom in a bit more. So, just like this. It's a little... Oops, that's not what I meant. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the that camera... Is nice. Yeah. So, something like this. I think that's good. I'll make it wider so that... Yeah, that is good, I think. Mm-hmm. I'll take a screenshot. There you go. Oh. The black swans. Nice framing as well. Mm. So, with that, mm -hmm. I'll end uh, this stream and I will start up in a just literally a couple of minutes uh, the next stream in which I will be exploring oh. Cornish Railways a bit more. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, yeah. Hello. There you are, I can hear you now. Yes, uh, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, being on the front page of a specific train, if a specific country isn't always... Uh, Alright, isn't always good though. Especially if it's an insult. What about local wanted criminals? <laughs> yeah, if you're front page. <laughs> uh, anyway. So thank you very, very much for watching. And thank you very much for being... In voice chat, Mr. W. <laughs> Mr. W, thank you very much for being in voice Wait, chat. Hang on, hang on. Thank you. I was saying thank you very much for being in voice chat, Mr. W. Yes. And thank you very much, everybody else, for being. See you later. I did. I did. Watching. I just to take my headphones off for a bit. Mm -hmm. I will start the other yeah. stream in a bye. minute. So bye.